Hi everyone, I'm Kylie. Today I have some exciting news. This is a very different video from what I usually make. My channel is usually about beauty, makeup and lifestyle, hair, that kind of stuff. But I am going to talk about my brand new pet that will be coming today in the mail. Uh, I just ordered on Friday a golden Hyverdula Mene... Uh, Membrane. I'm editing my video right now and it's bothering me so much. I found out um, because I have a giant golden Asian mantis, or a golden giant Asian mantis, it's a Hyradula venosa, not a Hyradula membranacea. Um, but throughout the video, ignore the fact that I'm calling it a membranaca because <laughs> it's membranacea, but it's actually not. It's a Hyradula venosa, not a Hyradula membranacea. This will be my first bug, and also all of the little things that are hard to pronounce. Um, if I'm saying them wrong, if I'm mispronouncing them, please tell me in the comments nicely. I have been reading articles, watching a lot of YouTube videos, and going on to uh, r slash mantids and things like that on Reddit, which I don't go on Reddit ever. It's a scary place for me to be. I'm trying to find the communities that will help me directly understand like how to be a better mantis mom. I found out that Pantera Pets, which is the website, PanteraPets.com, that will be in the description below. Turns out they are in Dulles, Virginia, and that's literally like 30 minutes from my house. And I was like, hmm, I wonder like how far they're shipping this thing. And I was like, oh, I could have just driven over there and picked it up if I really, uh, if they let me, you know? I have to leave in a, a few hours for work, so I'm hoping that it doesn't get here and then it sits here all day while I'm doing hair. I wanted to show you the enclosure and just everything that I have already. I think it's going to be either an L3 or an L4. I'm just going to consider it an L4 because if it's not yet, it probably will be very soon. Instars are when a mantis does a molt. A shed of their skin. Their first shed, they're then in their second instar. So when they are born, they're in their first instar, second instar, th third instar. They go all the way up until eight instars, and then within that time, you know that they're soon gonna pass away. Maybe within the next weeks or months, I'm not really sure how that works. I do know that mantids will uh, have a lifespan of roughly a year to a year and a half. I did see somewhere that my particular species, the Hyradula membranica, is the largest but also has a longer lifespan for the females. Like it can almost reach about two years if you're taking care of it in captivity. Um, with an enclosure, it should be two times the length of the mantis in width and three times the length of the mantis in height because when the mantis is molting, it hangs onto a branch and kind of I can't, I don't know if it slides out of its skin or it kind of kicks the skin off of it. I'm literally picturing like a small human like trying to kick off jeans while they're hanging onto a branch. But um, yeah, basically it has to be tall enough for them to do that because if they run into something and they can't molt properly, that is fatal. They're very fragile in molting, um, but they do need stuff to hang on and that a lot of times they will hang on the top where the mesh is. My dad created this and like I said before, I'm new at this. Um, I have a separate enclosure in case it's smaller. I looked up everywhere and no one will tell me how big an L4 uh, Hyradula is. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I'm calling it by its like species name that's more commonly known as a giant Asian mantis, and I specifically got, I think that would be Hyradula venosa, golden giant Asian mantis. And so what I'm hoping for is that maybe, maybe at some point, like, it'll look a little peachy, because I just think having, like, a peachy mantis would be really cute. But whatever it may be, it may be. Uh, but this is the enclosure for it if it is small enough, but then I have this bigger one. And I actually have a completely different enclosure that is uh, 10 inches tall and 6 inches wide on each side of its base from uh, Chewy.com. It's a website that you can buy stuff for pets on. And I ordered this as well, and this arrived before that. Now this came as a like spirally thing. I reshaped it into a heart-shaped base. It's a heart and then 
I created kind of a tree situation where now the mantis is able to be on any like part of it. It could rest here, it could rest here, it could hang from here or here or even here or here. Below this will be the substrate which holds moisture better. And I also have an aquatic plastic plant. I was worried about having a plastic thing in the enclosure because I don't want it to be too rough or too hard for it and I don't want it to get stuck with its legs in between these. But honestly, look how flimsy it is. I'm barely moving it and it's like shaking like crazy. It's like so soft. Um, the biggest worry with mantids is how fragile their legs are so they can break their leg if they get it stuck in something. That's something I have to worry about. With this, I feel like there's a lot less worry because it's literally, it, this is fake too. Um, there's a wire on the inside, but it's kind of this squishy material and it's very safe as far as I could tell from the website. And I would like to eventually upgrade to longer tongs. What are these called? S -s Pinchers? I'm blanking on the word, but this is to pick up prey and hand it to the mantis. <laughs> Or um, if I need to adjust things in the enclosure, I could just kind of like... Ugh. Now, the enclosure does have to be cleaned every week, so I'm still going to be taking the mantis out and like reorganizing things. I ha Here's my substrate. I have chosen... This is another word I don't know how to pronounce. Sphagnum moss. I also have my water bottle. I ran all of these items, both of my enclosures and um, the things that go in the enclosures, and then this as well. I ran that all underwater for like many, many minutes, uh, hot water, then cold water, and I just kind of like rinsed it, rinsed it, rinsed it, no soap whatsoever. This had um, cashews in it before, so I did wash it at first, but then like, you know, I still just made sure there was absolutely no trace left over of soap. Um, but this right here, like I've been kind of, you know, spritzing it. So it really doesn't leave any like big droplets, it's not like a shooting spray. I actually marked the top of it with a little bit of glittery nail polish so that this dial turns and uh, if it accidentally turns in the wrong direction where I might shoot the water in there and I might accidentally drown my mantis, which obviously I would not be spraying this directly on the mantis. If the mantis is on one corner, I'm spraying the other corner. So uh, I'm keeping it away from the mantis, but I'm doing one little spritz a day, maybe two times a day if I know it's about to molt. And I only use distilled water in this. I heard that you just shouldn't use tap. Hygrometer, digital hygrometer. This is for the enclosure to maintain the proper amount of moisture. For a golden mantis, you need um, to keep it around 75 degrees, no lower than 68, and no higher than 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And then humidity, it should be no lower than 40% and no higher than 60%. Over humidifying of a giant Asian mantis is the leading cause of death for it, which is so scary to me. I've already been doing research for two weeks. I have a list here of everything my mantis probably will eat based off of the research I've done. Blue bottle flies, which is what I ordered, um, cockroaches, grasshoppers, locusts, but I don't think they're legal in the U.S. to get. Um, crickets are one of them. Mosquitoes, which I'm excited about uh, because I hate mosquitoes. Moths, which I get so many. I love moths, but there's, they're all over Virginia and I get them in my house the moment I open my door when I'm coming home at night. So I'd be kind of cool with catching some and like giving them to the mantis. <laughs> and uh, monarch butterflies. I would never find a monarch butterfly to begin with, so I don't think that's ever happening. Bottle cap flies, small spiders. I also have a Northern American, di um, Northern American identification book for spiders, so I can look up which ones they are to make sure they're not venomous. And uh, mealworms, butterworms, and waxworms. So yeah, the worms, they all sound really delicious for my mantis because I have seen videos and it's like, man, that thing looks like juicy, you know? Yeah, I think that's really all I want to talk about before I actually do the unboxing. So this is my info, everything I know so far about mantids. Hey, baby. What's up? How are you? Guess what? I just sat down and my mantis is here and I'm about to open it. Oh, that is so cool. Can I can you put me on FaceTime? Yeah. I have Scott with me and I'm gonna put him on my tripod over here so he can watch me unbox. 
I'm trying to be very careful. I don't want to hurt it. Okay. Alright, so I ordered from Pantera Pets. I, so they said it was either an L3 or an L4, but I don't know, like, I was assuming they would tell me, so maybe I can, I can contact them about that. Oh, I can feel the heat pads. Oh my gosh, it's so tiny! It's so tiny. Oh, wow. goodness it molted it molted so I don't I don't want to touch it right now because it just molted um it molted in here no way oh I'm so scared about touching it now because this little baby is oh it's so cute it's right next to my finger yeah look how small it is and so, look, it just molted, so I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm scared to touch it because it's probably... Very fragile? Yeah, it's probably fragile. Okay, oh. baby, I love you. I'm going I back to work you. now. All right, bye. Bye, baby, I love you too. Bye. Hi, sweetheart. You're so beautiful. Okay, so I am still choosing between names. Um, hold on, I'm going to ask Instagram really quick. So I've decided that the best enclosure for this little one is going to be this uh, Kirkland cashew container. And, oop, okay, I, I gotta get, got to get the shedding out of the way. I'm just going to put that over here on the floor. I don't want to hurt my little baby, so I'm going to put everything to this side here. I don't want to disturb you, sweetheart. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to scare you. Okay. So now I'm about to put some substrate. I'm putting some sphagnum moss into the container. I think you look like a druid. I think that's what I'm going to name you. And now I'm going to take my high, high grow meter for the humidity levels. I want to press it on really tight so that it doesn't fall on my mantis at some point. Okay, so I either have this one or this one. I think it can handle this one. You're shaking like a leaf. Hi. No, please don't eat me. try to count the segments on the abdomen which honestly it's a little too small to do that but I'm gonna see if I can try one two three four five six it might be a male this seems pretty perfect okay so um, they actually brought him in a tool thing right here so I think I'm gonna get a little bit more tool and put that on top because the mesh top that my dad got me, well, he made this. It's made of this, like, thick metal, and it's just not safe for the mantis. Like, I mean, there's really sharp edges here, but it's too big also, so the mantis could easily get stuck in there and break something off. And this is tool from my mom's craft supply. Okay, so today is... November 3rd and my mantis has already molted either today or yesterday since it's been in the enclosure um, or since it's been in transit. Um, 
I'm so glad it was able to molt in peace like while it was just kind of in transit and it's clearly okay because it just seems to be fine it's just a little bit spooked because obviously it's a very new environment and while it is green right now I do believe that they change in color over time well, for some reason I feel like I should probably save this if anything it's kind of important to um save the first shed because <laughs> that's kind of cool I mean when you have a kid wouldn't you save it's for like a lock of hair from its first uh haircut like that's kind of how that would be yeah I also actually have a snake skin in a plastic bag that my dad found outside somewhere all right everyone the answer is clear this little baby's name is druid and uh, I also believe it might be a male because I counted the segments and while it is very small and I just don't know if that's gonna change or anything, um, it has six segments. Most species you really can't tell until they're much older adults. There's a few other things that they may do, like uh, a ring may appear around their neck that, that is either more golden or brownish in color or more green in color and that can signify whether it is a male or female but I, I, I don't know anything about that so <laughs> I'm just kind of going off of the segment test uh, before it starts getting old enough for me to see the full shape of it. I guess this little guy's name is Druid and he will go by Drew. The water that... Oh, sorry I just got freaked out for a second. A uh, black thing right here is I, I looked at it and I swear to god I thought it was a gigantic roach and somehow it got in the tank. <laughs> That's just the bottom of the aquatic plant. Oh, I'm so scared of bugs, I don't know why I have a mantis. <laughs> Having a mantis as a pet is going to help me with my fear of bugs because I'm going to have to handle them in a controlled environment where I bought them, I have them for a specific reason, my mantis needs them. There is your little face. Yeah, okay. Bye everyone, I'll see you guys later. Stay epic, say bye to Druid for me, and uh, I'll see you guys later. If you blow on her, she might sway like a leaf. She's cleaning herself. That's you. Isn't that crazy? That's you, Druid. <gasps> oh, you just jumped. She just... Yeah? She jumped onto the screen while I was filming her. Oh my gosh. <laughs>